Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. As you can see, I have with me Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar, who's going to take us through the happenings of India's neighborhood. Very important to understand for two, three reasons. One, it is our neighborhood. Second, China has been making inroads in pretty much all the countries around the place. We need to figure out what's happening and how things are moving forward. Before I begin, sir, uh, why don't you just give us a you know uh, a brief thought or your understanding or your little thought about India's neighborhood and what's happening around us? Yeah, uh, well, as far as the neighborhood is concerned, um, the neighborhood is not very uh, stable at this point of time. Pakistan, of course, is going through its dramatic changes every day. Uh, what with Mr. Imran Khan saying that he'll get onto the streets and what have you. He, I don't know whether he's threatening the nation or the opposition or the uh, army, but it's interesting times and how it is. Uh, Myanmar is in a uh, bit of a huge flux with China making a lot of inputs and a lot of uh, violence within. Uh, Sri Lanka is in turmoil, financial turmoil, and it's in financial emergency. And again, you see Chinese activity there. And then, of course, uh, for a long time, Maldives was quiet and that's also coming up. What's happening in Nepal and Bhutan are really not much to talk home of. Uh, there's nothing very great really happening there. Uh, uh, Bangladesh is on an even keel. right? There's nothing uh, for us to, at this point of time, focus uh, and you know, think of. But if you leave Pakistan out, which is uh, a subject by itself, <laughs> I think we should focus uh, today on Myanmar and Sri Lanka. Sure, sir. As you said, nothing much happening in Nepal. It's struggling with COVID and a lot of political turmoil. And that's been happening since last year. So, it's, you know, it's been uh, pretty much on a stable sort of a game. Uh, Bangladesh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, <clears throat> the Chinese have been also making inroads there. There's a there's a there's a road which is going the mega expressway that they talk about, which is going to bypass Dhaka, costing about four hundred million dollars. The Chinese are pushing it pretty hard. Bhutan, happy country, they're doing their uh, you know booster shots and there's some lockdowns here and there, and of course the tension with the border villages. As the general mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan, of course, is an interesting thing. And we'll try and get back with another video as, as part of the general's talk as to what's happening in Pakistan. Because the, the events are kind of unfolding as we speak. So a uh, premature analysis would be just the situation analysis. We'd like to go in a little deeper. Uh, economic wars, issues with the Durand line, a whole lot of problems there. And I think the Taliban are now flying on their own self by going to Nor uh, Norway. So the Pakistanis might not be very happy. Coming to the biggest game uh, maker of the episode, as uh, General Shankar also mentioned, sir, Myanmar, you know, the yeah. issues are quite heavy there. As a matter of fact, there was a silent pro protest that was taken, done by the pop general populace. And it was quite successful. 10th December, almost six hours, nothing was working in that country. Uh, you know, this was because of the military atrocities that were happening there. Uh, you know, the National Unity Government has claimed an upper hand and uh, they talk about taking back the, you know, power from the military. Daily clashes have been taking place. The Chinese, as you mentioned, sir, they've got a lot of projects which have come up after the coup. And that is something very interesting. If you see the total, it's about three, three and a half billion dollars. I mean, how do you see something like that coming in, sir? See, first and foremost, the situation in Myanmar is nebulous. <clears throat> protests are taking place the janta is having its say they've even uh, extended the you know given an additional sentence to Aung San Suu Kyi the NLD is losing its relevance uh, it's a three way game going on between people, NLD and the uh, janta uh, a lot of massacres taking place, a refugee situation on a lot, there are a lot of refugees uh, towards Asia and, and to us also. To some extent, there's some destabilization in Nagaland and uh, Manipur and Mizoram. We can see the effects. So it's not a happy situation uh, in uh, Myanmar by any stretch of the imagination. Amidst all this, there's a move by through Cambodia to 
and do some mediation with Myanmar, which is really not worked, right? So others are only giving sanctions and things like that, nothing much. Uh, China, as you said, is making headway. Again, it's a questionable thing. They're making deals, but is there anything getting executed on ground? Don't know. And the uh, Chinese had uh, sealed the Myanmar-China border because of COVID. So it's a state of flux. China, yes, has got through to the uh, uh, Janta. Now, it doesn't matter to them whether it's the Janta or Aung San Suu Kyi. It doesn't matter. They'll deal. They're very pragmatic about it. Uh, what I'm worried is our stance. You know, we are been quite, I won't say ambivalent. We are not. We, we, we are still sitting like a cat on the fence. Myanmar, our stakes in Myanmar are very high. Uh, we've got some tremendous uh, positives there because the people, everyone trusts China. I mean, India there very uh, uh, happily. I mean, I mean. The positive part is that the people, the uh, NLD, and also the Janta, they all trust India, but India is not making a move. That's dicey. And considering the fact that our Northeast is slowly getting destabilized, right? And then, you know, uh, there are calls for uh, removal of ASPA and things like that. So, you know, that belt is not. Uh, in a happy state. And something uh, I think we need to do. Uh, I've said this in other time, places also. We need to take a very clear initiative. One, to deny China its space and second, to stabilize our own border with Myanmar and have Myanmar in your camp. Right? Uh, and we get some reconciliation process and route. You can't have the killings going on every day. <clears throat> that is interesting, sir. But uh, we also see that the uh, you know U.S. and there was a French company Chevron and uh, I think uh, another company that is I'm sorry I'm just missing out the name right now for the French company who were producing gas, which was the main uh, you know point of revenue for the Junta government. Now they switched over to teak, and uh, you know a lot of a lot of export of wood which is happening from there, and that's how they've kind of uh, kept their economy alive or whatever is left of it alive. Having said that, sir, we also see the junta, you know, uh, giving back about giving back or catching up five terrorists that were you know handed back from the PLA to the Indian Army recently. So that does see. Tell you- let, let let let's be very clear. That's why I said the junta is with the government of India. And the Indian Army, the democracy is with us. The people are with us. Why are we not making a move is a question mark. See, whatever the West does in terms of gas, sanctions, it's all very minor. No one is bothered about. Okay. And they also won't like to you know, drop their gas contacts, uh, contracts and all and stop this engagement with Myanmar. That's a form of engagement. Hmm. So, but... Uh, what I'm worried about is why are we letting China gain more space there? Yeah. When we can, we have the potential to. That's the point. And cooperation does come. There was another news that came out. 2,500 yeah. kilograms of explosives with 4,500 meters of detonators. Indian currency about a lakh of rupees and uh, Myanmar currency of about 935,000 kayak was recovered uh, by the Assam rifles in that area. That's a huge amount of cash, if, I mean, in, in terms of uh, explosive power itself. Yeah, I agree with you. That's a little dicey, sir. This is, <laughs> I think, uh, as you mentioned, there was a visit of uh, Harshwadar Shingla, which who went over there some time back. But I think follow-up... Yeah, follow-up is required. Critical, sir. Let's see how things go. Absolutely, yes, sir. Moving down south, sir, Sri Lanka, I mean, bad to worse, uh, they paid some 500 million um, of which was due of, on their sovereign bonds and they've got another payment of about a billion dollars, um, you know, which is coming up in July and their reserves are about 3.1 billion. Uh, that includes a currency swap they did with the Chinese as well. So, you know, before I, 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 I get into what projects that India and Sri Lanka recently signed, how do you see the Chinese reaction towards Sri Lanka's debt problems? Because Wangi also went there 
they requested for a debt restructure they said yes 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 but nothing really happened after that see uh, what was happening in sri lanka is bad for sri lanka i agree with you you know they're in, they're in a bad shape they don't have foreign currency they there's an internal problem there's a food problem there's a tourism drop covid everything <coughs> and they're in a financial emergency we spoke about this in one of the earlier neighborhood uh, watch uh, series and the good thing is as far as sri lanka is concerned despite all this uh, shimozels india has managed to get some uh, you know, uh, grip there especially with the uh, currency swap deal we have done with them the colombo terminal which has gone to adanis and then the indian oil is also taken part of that oil farm right and uh, in uh, partnership with with the sri lankan government so we've got some this thing and suddenly sri lanka and they know that look uh, india matters and india is someone who will help them mm-hmm. the positive part uh, well if you look at the chinese part the chinese have he hard gone back they have not done any uh, debt uh, thing nothing so there is some ill will coming up there but then you know the sri lankans have done a smart move or oh, is uh, either the ambassador or gangi went to one of the northern areas in a tamil area and went and visited a temp- temple without this you know he was playing the tamil politics so oh, that's dicey mm. uh, right <clears throat> now they not only cornered the sri lanka uh, sri dhalas now they are trying to corner the tamilians yeah. also mm-hmm. okay so i'll not count sri lanka as sinali uh, sorry uh, china out of sri lanka uh, though t- today their relationship is wasn't as uh, great as it was say maybe 6 months back or a year back there are things are uh, we are able to we been able to pull back things and uh, sri lankan government is very clear that uh, our sensitivities have to be taken care of without our sensitivities being taken care of not, they can do nothing so to that extent yes we made some gains but we need to do more actually this is the crisis where it should come out that sri lanka's best options lie with india how india manages that is the trucks whether it is to help them out with the imf whether it is to you know sort out their daily requirements whether to start a aid program or some kind of a you know, credit line or something like that already we given them 1.5 billion dollars worth of credit line better terms whatever i mean you know so it's a the, the ball is in our court to put it as a matter of fact yes sir, we also uh, you know we've also gone ahead and uh, uh, spoken about the huge amount of currency swap that we are giving them we've given them yeah. about uh, fuel food and you know we had a very disturbing news that came out of sri lanka last week which talked about uh, the lack of fuel to produce electricity and it was just 24 yeah. hours left so yeah i think they'll go they have they have i mean let's put it this way with a kind of mismanagement which uh, the government has done there they're going to suffer right their agriculture is going to suffer the food stuff uh, they're going to have a problem they're going to be a near humanitarian crisis like i said uh, every crisis is an opportunity so the opportunity is for india to regain its uh, strategic space there Doesn't how matter. well we do it is a how well we do it is a challenge with us you also mentioned the sinalis and the tamil issue we saw the tamil mps on uh, sri lanka northern sri lanka wrote a letter to the our prime minister modi you know requesting his assistance of the implementation of that 13th amendment pending since yeah, that is a pr- process which will go on but i don't think 13th amendment is a very important thing at this point of time at this point of time it is to give a lifeline to sri lanka which is better yeah into the whole of sri lanka which is which makes them realize that who their true friends are and where their true interests lie and that the, the chinese guy will not help them as it is is given in some cold shoulder and gone back mm. and he is also trying to play the tamil and versus sri lankan sinhala politics 
all these things are good for us to start talking of a lot of work there sir uh, we also you know sri lankans are also settling up their past debts uh, about 5 million dollars or something like that they sent yeah. tea to the iranians yeah. for all yeah. yeah to the iranians they are now doing the butter uh, but well these are things which they have to do they have no choice but really they have nothing else they only uh, export from sri lanka sp <clears throat> even that they are in a problem because their tea crop also had failed because of the pesticides which they were to use organic versus uh, normal pesticides so there is a they are in a problem let's be very frank whether it's whatever they do they are in a problem we have to help them out how much can we help them out and how you know smartly we can help them out is the issue Absolutely. can we swing the imf to look at them favorably at this point of time i don't know and also this is the time to extract certain political concession from them it's not as if the 13th amendment and the devolution of power to tamils should be fully written off you need to put that also in some even keel so this is the time to do it we have a lot of i mean look we got an opportunity how will we use it is up to us and there's nobody else doing anything so it's yeah, a clear anything. game for us right now in myanmar yes. it's not the case no myanmar we have competition but yeah. again see myanmar and sri lanka we myanmar that opportunity always existed we somehow never took it here the opportunity is opened up we should take it absolutely the initial reaction was pretty good here uh, yeah kind of and also the uh, wangi went to maldives that's open the, the friendship next. bridge and, yes, yeah and he is trying to make some he- headway there uh, some of the opposition there also have warmed up to him right and we have to understand his uh, at this point of time maybe his trip didn't get all the success which he went and sought there but he's made the dent his third the honors next can he turn the tide that's a question actually i that's what i wanted to discuss with you this wangi strip recently it was basically focused towards india's neighborhood and, yeah uh, you know he's yeah yeah the- look let's be very clear sri lanka i mean you know china is very clear that it has to make inroads in india's neighborhood it is very clear that india's uh, uh, india is its main competitor after usa you know their competitor so it will do everything unless it makes inroads into indian ocean china cannot realize its dreams so indian ocean means where maldives sri lanka myanmar very simple i mean the equations are very clear we should be we should read the thing very clearly why is they going to uh, myanmar kai ka few china myanmar economic corridor very simple and water water from the mitsone dam so that it goes into yunnan because yunnan doesn't have water right so these are the three issues with myanmar what chinese interests are here it's very clear they slowly want to chip away at sri lanka so that one day hamban tota can become a naval base fundamentally this is their long term objective we should be clear about it how to to order it okay and then <coughs> maldives they will give their left and right arm they'll give they'll flood maldives with money free of cost to get a foothold there cuz maldives anything in maldives is like gold for them to control ior so and- there we should be very clear as to what their intent is that is where there's sort of a you know what a lot of people write about us minor cold war sort of a situation which is happening yeah yeah it is it is and let's be very clear we also doing the same thing yeah we are giving brahmos to philippines we got equations with vietnam right now i think defense and, minister is supposed to visit there now yeah he will and we'll make some overtures to taiwan in some form uh, might not be official uh, unofficial and uh, right and uh, let's see how things go what do you think uh, generally speaking in the neighborhoods uh, is it you know the eastern part is obviously in a bit of a turmoil what uh, the myanmar issue is a bit a bit of a challenge right now we also see the 
Chinese arming Pakistan over this side. So there, there's obviously a strategy which is evolving. This something that a lot of people have been talking about for a long time. Probably Look, because... uh, I'll put it this way: the the nexus between China and Pakistan will continue. Yeah, and it will continue to strengthen the relationship in some form or the other that we should expect. But the way I look at it, China itself has had some issues. We've discussed it. Pakistan is going through a flux. This gives us certain some space to focus on strengthening our uh, equations with Myanmar, Sri Lanka, and Maldives, and of course strengthen our equation with Bangladesh. This is the time. This is the opportunity. Are we the challenges? Are we in a position to take it and grab it, or we will be let it pass? And this is more of a political, uh, you know, initiative than a defense initiative. Yeah, political and strategic initiative. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because the understanding of the IOR has to be there. Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a. We have this opportunity. How well we take it is up to us. Absolutely. We'll see how it is. Yeah. With the Russians doing whatever they are in uh, Europe, the Chinese. Yeah, Russia is busy. No, they are not going to come down yeah. till that Ukraine crisis is over and the fallout. And I don't see it happening in a hurry. They have come into a stage where they are headbutting each other. Mm. So it's going to be a long drawn out affair. At least again, the... good thing. No, no, again, good thing. The whatever is happening in Ukraine means that Russia and China won't be on the same wicket on many things. Okay, so China is. Slightly on a limb, they'll support Russia and all that, but China is on a limb at this point of time. They doesn't have any one to back it in its thing. But then China is strong on its own, so it can do what it wants. Do we have the capability to grab this opportunity? Is the acid test for us? Extended neighborhood. Yeah, and of course. Af- Afghanistan and Pakistan will keep helping each other into what wherever they are, right? It's a reinforcing uh, paradigm for them, which will keep them away from us. Yeah, of course. Mm. Okay, so there is some stability there. Uh, also, we have to take into consideration that the Sinopak equation is not as strong as it was say three months, four months back. Yeah, there are little bond problems. Mm. A little uh, issues there. So, like I said, this is the opportunity. Which is, I mean, in international affairs and in your neighborhood, you don't get these opportunities daily. We it has opened up. I mean, we've been discussing strategy of affairs for the past one year plus. This is the first time there is something where we can really put our hands on and say, look, we can we can do something, okay. and we do it. Big question, sir. I think only time will tell. And uh... yeah, let's leave it, leave it to that. And uh, <laughs> till the next uh, round of the strategic affairs, yeah, I mean, sure. the I'll... neighborhood watch. Let's let's kind of hope in the next fifteen days or twenty days when we do this again, there is some development which is taking place. Yeah. Myanmar seems a bit difficult. It's a little foggy as well because. But of... Sri Lanka, I'm hopeful. Sri Lanka, as I was just about to say, I think uh, if we are able to do something in that country. There should be a lot of benefit coming our way in terms of uh, the anti-China sentiment and a little bit of fire to that within that country. Yeah, yeah. It's also yeah, huge yeah. right now. Sir, thanks so much for taking us through the neighborhood except Pakistan, which as I said in the beginning of the video, we will come back. No, we did touch on Pakistan also. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll come back with a little detail. Yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll come back with a hol- holistic thing because that deserves uh, uh, in-depth study. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, I think uh, there is. It's also time that we can also look at. Uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about China in the upcoming China Watch series, which are which we've started. So stay tuned, sir. Thank you so much uh, for this welcome, you know, insightful discussion. Till next time, sir. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.